People of New Bethel, rejoice, for he is risen. He is risen indeed. Our bell choir in the back is going to start us off with a marvelous prelude. But first, I'd like to welcome all of you, all of you in the sanctuary, all of those watching online, to Easter Sunday worship today at New Bethel United Methodist Church in Glen Carbon, Illinois. Today, you are in the right place to worship God. Amen. It is the right day to worship God. Amen. I pray that our worship here today will be a glorious offering to the Lord and His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our prelude title today is Near to the Heart of God.
song 304 in your hymnal, Easter people, raise your voices. And as all who can able, who are able, please rise. We would like to raise our voices to God this glorious Easter day. be seated. We'll invite the children to come forward for the children's moment. And our youth minister, Brittany Wright, is going to share with you. Hi, everyone. Happy Easter. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to talk about today is one of my favorite things about Easter. What's your guys' favorite things about Easter? <laughs> Easter baskets, going on egg hunts. Mine was always the egg hunt because I was always a competitive kid and I would always try to beat my brother to see who could get the most eggs. And I'd always be so excited to see what was inside because my favorite things were the little jelly beans that tasted like Starburst. Parents, those are the best jelly beans. <laughs> um, but one of the surprises about Easter isn't actually what we get on Easter from the Easter Bunny and going on egg hunts. It's about... Um, the actual surprise that Jesus was, um, he was not in the tomb. He was alive. And he rose from the dead because whenever he died for our sins, he came back three days later so that we can all go to heaven because he took our sins. And that is the real reason for Easter. So, yeah. Um, We'll have a prayer. Um, dear God, I thank you for all these children, your children of God. I hope that they have a blessed Easter and that we all welcome you into our hearts and thank you for taking on our sin. In your name, amen. And then, here's offering. We're going to collect a change offering if you'll help us. Brittany's got some baskets for you. You want to take the little buckets. You remember how we pass them? Chase, do you want to help us? You're just going to pass it to people in the pew, and they'll put some change in, okay? If you have a few spare coins and you'd like to drop them in the kids' noisy change offering, we kind of like the noise of this, but our change is going to support the Glen Ed Food Pantry for this quarter. So thank you. Children, just give them to the tech booth in the back when you finish.
I'm uh, sensing a little energy and excitement this morning. Can you tell? <laughs> oh, we need some good news, don't we? Life is hard. Amen? Amen? Let's come to the Lord in prayer on this Easter morning. Oh, gracious and loving God, we, we do need some good news. We celebrate this morning the resurrection of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. It reminds us that we have hope for today. It reminds us that we can get through the difficulties of this life. The resurrection reminds us that you have a future for us, Lord, and it's a good future, not for our harm, but a, a good future with, with joy and peace and hope. And ultimately, Lord, we're going we're gonna to live with you in heaven. And we thank you for that. We know uh, we need that assurance because life here on earth is very hard. There's still a lot of darkness in the world. And there are things that, that push us down, Lord. There are things that hang over us. There are things that afflict us on a daily basis. Um, but, but when we carry the gospel of Jesus, when we carry that hope in our hearts, um, we can find it. We can find it in any moment that we need it. When we turn to you, um, we just... We can pause and, and take a deep breath. We can have a word of prayer. We can open our Bibles. We can read a scripture. And immediately, the Holy Spirit comes to us and reassures us. It's kind of like Jesus. We, we read the scripture earlier this week, Lord, about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and he was having trouble and he was sweating uh, drops of sweat when he prayed, Lord, that were kind of like blood. And God, an angel came to him and strengthened him. And, and that reminds us that when we pray, you strengthen us as well. We thank you for that. We move forward in faith, one step at a time, not relying on only what we can see, but relying on the promises of Scripture and the truth of the gospel of Christ. We know that you will make a way for us. And Lord, that, that way is eventually going to lead through the grave for each one of us. But there is life beyond the grave. The grave is kind of like a, a tunnel that we pass through, Lord, to get to you. And, and as Christians, we have that assurance. And it just it takes a little bit of the fear away. And so we thank you for those gifts. Help us, Lord, while we do walk on this earth, to be reflective of the light of Christ. Help us to look for places where we can help where we can serve, where we can pray, where we can encourage, where we can do good. Whether other people um, appreciate it, whether they thank us for it um, or not, Lord, we do it to serve you. And, and just give us that kind of energy, that kind of passion to serve you in this world. Lord, it is a beautiful world that you have created. And we know that, that sin abounds, but your grace abounds even more. Thank you, God, for being with us. Receive our worship this day as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Would the ushers wait upon us for the morning offering, the tithes? We appreciate your change offering. That's going to the Glen Ed Food Pantry. We also take a special offering. There's some special envelopes. Um, there's some out in the lobby. You can raise your hand and the usher will bring you one if you want to make a special donation to the Cunningham Children's Home. It is one of our five United Methodist ministries in this conference that serves children. And it is a residential place, um, so the kids can stay there. They can um, be schooled there. They can be counseled there. Um, it's a really neat ministry. It's in Urbana, and uh, that's what the special Easter offering is going to support. And then uh, just your regular offerings uh, continue to fund our ministries here. So thank you for your generosity. Um, all of these gifts we try to use um, to the advancement of the kingdom of God and to glorify him. So thank you. Let us pray over the offering. Dear God, use these things, multiply them, these gifts, um, and do good work, Lord, that people might feel your love through the ministries of this church, through the ministries of the Cunningham Children's Home, that people, uh, especially children, Lord, might know that they matter, that they are cherished, that they are loved, um, that you have a future for them, and, and that, that life is a gift. We just want to share that good news and that it's not for this life only that we've been created. There is life after this one with you in heaven. And so all of that, Lord, we just look for ways to share. Bless us this day, and thank you for sending Jesus. Amen. When I think about Easter, my first thought that comes to mind is all those chocolate bunny rabbits we see on sale. <laughs> and after that, it's a nice Easter egg hunt. And after that, it's a nice brunch with the family. But today, I would like to remind people that Easter is first and foremost a day that we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord, and the promise and hope of entry into the kingdom of heaven. And it's only possible because of Jesus. Without him, I wouldn't be lost. Before we start the second hymn, I'd like to point out these wonderful decorations that our in-house artist 
Mrs. Annette Frick has put up for us. Thank you. What you see here is representation of the hill of Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified on that center cross. He bore a crown of thorns on his head. He was nailed to the cross and died a violent and brutal death. And on the third day, he was resurrected. Please all rise for him, number 302, Christ the Lord is risen today. Thank you. Thank you. Oh.
Robert Louis Stevenson looked out his window one evening many years ago. Those were the days before electric lights. Stevenson saw the town lamplighter coming along. As the lamplighter lit the street lights in succession, Stevenson was impressed at the sight. He wrote about the lamplighter who went along punching holes in the darkness. I like that. Punching holes in the darkness. What a great image. What a perfect description of what Jesus did. What a perfect description of what we are called to do. Jesus Christ came into this world as a light and he punched holes in the darkness. As he was teaching, he punched holes in the darkness that surrounded people's thinking. As he was healing, he punched holes in the darkness of sickness and disease. As he resisted temptation, he punched holes in the devil's forces. As he calmed the wind and the waves, he punched holes in our fears. As he died on the cross, he punched holes in the web of sin that entangles every human being. And as Jesus rose from the grave, he punched a hole in the fear, despair, and the finality surrounding death. Punching holes in the darkness. That's exactly what Jesus did. I want to pick up with our story where we left off on Friday evening when Jesus went to the cross on that fateful Friday amid all the chaos and the disruption and the crying and the yelling. I want you to understand that the devil considered this a victory, right? Yea, I have killed Jesus, uh, I have killed Jesus of Nazareth. We have eliminated God's son. Because the devil understood nothing of God's plan of redemption. The devil didn't know, didn't have a clue about the atoning sacrifice of Christ on the cross. And so when he saw Jesus die on the cross, the devil was thinking, victory, victory. As Jesus died, displayed on a cross, the darkness rejoiced as if heaven had lost. But that is not the case, as we know. After Jesus had passed away, after he died, Joseph of Arimathea was a member of the Jewish council, but he was one who had sided with Jesus. He did not vote with the rest of them, most of the rest of them, to, to punish this man, to eliminate this man. Joseph of Arimathea was on Jesus' side, and he came and he took Jesus' lifeless body and he laid it in a garden tomb. He had to hurry because the Sabbath, the Jewish Sabbath, was going to start at sundown, and he was losing daylight. So he, he did this in kind of hasty fashion, and, and the women were going to come back later after Sabbath, another day, and properly prepare Jesus' body for permanent burial. But Joseph laid Jesus in this tomb, and he rolled a great stone uh, across the front of it, sealing the body of Christ in the deepest darkness. Days passed, and it seemed as if the darkness still ruled as Sunday morning came. I'm reading to you um, this morning from the 24th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, love this, why do you look for the living among the dead? That is just a great line of scripture to say. Would you say it with me? Why do you look for the living among the dead? Oh, great question. He is not here, the angel said. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. See, Jesus had already told them that when he would die, it would not be the end, but it was coming, and they had forgotten. But when the angels reminded them, they remembered Jesus' words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to the others. Who's missing? There were twelve Judas is gone. He's already hanged himself. He had betrayed Christ, and the guilt got him, and he hanged himself. 
but, but they went and they told all these things to the 11 and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the 11 apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Another translation says, seemed to them an idle tale. We might say wishful thinking, right? Okay, you went to the tomb, it was empty, you think Jesus, okay, yeah, no, we don't believe it. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. And bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. (coughs) There was Jesus, shining his light, punching a hole in the darkness of death and despair. The other disciples, the eleven, they were a little slow to believe, but that's okay. Jesus would punch a hole in the darkness of their disbelief before the day's end. He would fill all of them with Easter joy. He would gift them with the Holy Spirit, and he would assure them that they would all have resurrection power when they needed it. We're going to focus this morning on three things about God that Easter demonstrates. Number one, Easter demonstrates God's love, the incredible depth of God's love for us. We can see how much God loves us in the fact that God was willing to sacrifice and make such an intense, awesome, great sacrifice on our behalf. What a deep sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Jesus was sacrificed because of God's love for this world, for you and for me. Doesn't that demonstrate the depth of God's love for humanity? What a tremendous sacrifice. Someone once said that something is worth whatever somebody else will pay for it, right? Something is worth whatever you can get somebody else to pay for it. If I said I'd give you $50 for that hymnal in front of you, and and I gave you that $50, then what is that hymnal worth? It's worth $50, right? Because that's what somebody was willing to pay for it. So here's what I want you to think about. What does it say that God thought you and I were worth the life of his son? What does that say about what God thinks of us? What are we worth to God? That's pretty intense, isn't it? That God would give his son and sacrifice him to save you and to save me. I think that speaks volumes about God's love. I certainly don't feel worthy, but God thought we were. The death of Jesus punched a hole in the darkness of sin and death, and it demonstrates God's incredible love toward us. Secondly, I think Easter demonstrates God's incredible power, God's sovereignty, okay? God is sovereign over all things, and we know this. We read the scriptures. He created everything. But, but God is in control of everything, heaven, earth, the elements, nature, people, angels, Satan, darkness, disease, even death. God is large and in charge of it all. On Easter Sunday, Christ broke out of the seeming permanence of death. The breakthrough was a sign of what lies in store for anyone who will come after Christ as a follower. Easter is a sign for us that life is greater than death. The life that we have in Christ as his follower is greater than the death we will die uh, at the end of our time on this earth. For Christ has conquered the grave. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your sting? Where, O grave, is your victory? Well, we admit that death still has a little bit of a sting to it. It does hurt us. But it's not the end of us. The grave didn't hold my Jesus for very long. And friends, that grave isn't going to hold me either. Amen? I am counting on that. When George Bush was vice president of the United States, one of his official duties was to represent our country at the funeral of the Soviet leader, uh, Leonid Brezhnev. 
Uh, this was back in 1982. It was like 40, over 40 years ago. But the entire funeral procession was marked by its military precision. There was a coldness and a hollowness that enveloped it. Since the Soviet Union was officially atheistic, there, was no, there were no comforting prayers offered. There were no spiritual hymns sung. Only the marching soldiers and the steel helmets and the Marxist rhetoric were offered. There was no mention of God, of course. Mr. Bush was close enough to the casket when Mrs. Brez Brezhnev came forward to say her last goodbye to her husband. And Bush would later share that she walked up, took one last look at her husband, and there in the cold gray center of that totalitarian state, she traced the design of the cross on his chest. I was stunned, Bush said. In that simple act, God had broken through the core of the communist system. That was Bush's take on it. I think what a powerful testimony to the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that can reach even places where it's forbidden. Easter demonstrates God's power. Human beings cannot limit God. I'm going to say that again, okay? Human beings cannot limit what God can do. God changes things. And God works for good in the world. And God can break down any barrier. God can forgive any sin. God can roll away any stone. God can punch a hole in any darkness. God is sovereign over all. Easter demonstrates God's power. And finally, lastly, Easter demonstrates God's plan for us. When Jesus came out of that tomb, he emerged with our freedom in hand. We have freedom from sin. We have freedom from fear. We have, in a sense, freedom from death, or, or at least the permanence of death, okay? We have a freedom from that. We don't have to worry about that. When we do die, we will share in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because he was raised, we shall be raised too. Jesus promised to share that victory with us. And so Christians throughout the world today are gathering on this Easter Sunday to remember and to celebrate that death and despair are not God's final words to us. It is not the end of the story. Life, resurrection, joy, completeness, grace, wholeness, that is our destiny, friends. That is our future. Because we have been redeemed from our sins and given new life in the here and now, Okay, it's not just about endure what you have to in this life and we'll be happy in the next. It's not just about that. Because Jesus came for us to have life abundant here on earth and eternal in the heavens. So it's not an either or or a first this and then that, which will be better. It's both and, okay? And so resurrection people, those who follow Christ, those who know they are covered by the blood, they are saved, they have been redeemed, they live in this world differently. I want you to uh, consider how the disciples changed after Jesus' resurrection and after the gift of the Holy Spirit. They went around for the rest of their lives with an energy and an enthusiasm and a joy that was literally God-breathed into them, okay? I have that. You have that as a gift from God. They went around with this energy and enthusiasm and joy that was God breathed into them. They were different. They had changed. They were forgiven of their sins, and they knew it. They went along, uh, they went around doing the same things that they'd seen Jesus do. They were healing and helping and teaching people and punching holes in the darkness, you know, wherever they encountered it. It's the same for us. When you and I come to faith in Jesus Christ, we are changed too. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. This is all part of God's plan. We are forgiven of our sins. The Spirit comes to live within us, and that Holy Spirit guides us in a new way of living and a new way of relating. We relate to God a little differently, and we relate to other people a little differently, definitely better, okay, when we follow Jesus. 
And like the disciples, we go around doing the things they did. We proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We visit people uh, when they're sick. We visit people in the prisons. We um, share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We punch holes in the darkness of our world. We do nice things for people in the name of Jesus. And we let the light of Christ shine through us. That's what we do. Um, Jason Gray has a, a wonderful song. It's called Pushing Back the Dark. It's kind of the same idea about punching holes in the darkness. He, uh, he sings, one million reasons why you shouldn't even try. After all, you're just one heart, a single candle in the dark. And there are shadows here feeding on your fears that you don't have what it takes. Who are you to make of change? Um, raise your hand if you've ever thought that, you know. Like, um, I, you know, the task is just too large. Uh, the damage is too great. The burden is too big. I just, there's nothing I can do to fix it. There's nothing I can do. And then he sings, but oh, oh, don't underestimate the God you follow. Whatever you do, just don't look back. Oh, somebody needs the light you have. Whatever you do, just don't lose heart. Keep on pushing back the dark. I like that. Have you ever lost heart? Have you ever lo looked back and, and just gotten depressed, <laughs> you know? Um, that happens to us sometimes. But, but it happens to us when we forget for a moment who God is and what God is capable of and what God has done in Jesus Christ. It happens to us sometimes. We are sinful creatures. We are fallen. We can be saved, and, and still we're in a fallen state, okay? Uh, we live in a fallen world. And so that, that temptation, that sin, it, it still entangles us a little bit from time to time when we forget whose we are and, and what God has done in Jesus Christ. Then those doubts can come at us. Um, but he goes on to sing. He says, uh, the city on a hill, it should be shining still. Every sinner saved by grace has a purpose, has a place. I love that. Inside the bigger plan, okay? You and I are all little bitty but very important pieces of God's plan to redeem the people of planet Earth. All of us matter to God. Remember, we are worth something to God. He paid the price of his son's life to redeem us. We matter, every one of us. God is counting on us. Every sinner saved by grace has a purpose, has a place inside the bigger plan. We might not understand, but if we just keep walking on, we'll see the kingdom come. Many a days there have been in my years as a pastor when I wasn't sure what to do next except to keep moving. <laughs> you know, just, just keep going through the motions that you know. I remember one time in my ministry I was very depressed about something. Um, we had had a big church meeting, and um, it had gone very awry, okay? And, and I didn't know what to do. Um, and, and I went to bed, and I was very sad, and I prayed a lot. But the next morning, I got up, and I went to the local Barnes & Noble, and I sat down, and I did my disciple Bible study. I didn't know what was coming next, but I knew I had class soon, and, and I did what I had been trained to do. When all else fails... Just dive into what? The word, right? Just dive into the word. Long story short, it worked out, okay? But, but we all have those moments where we don't understand, we don't know what's next. It's okay. Just keep moving forward in faith. Whatever you do, just don't look back. Somebody needs the light you have. Whatever you do, just don't lose heart. Keep on pushing back the dark. Can I get an amen on Easter morning? Amen. All right, I'm not quite through, but... That was good. <laughs> I'm almost through. I'm almost through. That was a neat song by Jason Gray, Pushing Back the Dark. You should Spotify it. Even in a post-Easter world, Christians still have trials and troubles. We have broken relationships. We have money problems. We face violence and temptations. We experience grief and loss and accidents. But we face all of these things differently because we have Jesus by our side. I uh, remember the story, you may remember it as well, <coughs> excuse me, back in 1994, a tornado hit Reverend Kelly Clem's church. It was the Goshen United Methodist Church in Piedmont, Alabama. It was a Palm Sunday back in 1994. The tornado destroyed the sanctuary during morning worship. 
It injured 90 people and killed 20 others. Six of the dead were children. Including the pastor's four-year-old daughter. As the storm hit, the children were singing, the Lord will provide. Now, friends, we cannot say that God causes such things to happen. Okay, that's, that's very bad theology. Okay? The God revealed very clearly through Jesus Christ, does not send tornadoes to kill young children who are singing his praises. The same God behind all of creation was at work even then in the aftermath of that tornado, comforting and helping, restoring hope, protecting people's faith, keeping them close to him despite that. And that church continued. In faith, they worked through the grief and moved on. They didn't look back. And they pushed through the dark. God is at work in every situation, bringing comfort and hope and resurrection power to his people. Christians face devastating loss just like everyone else in the world, but we face it differently because of our faith. Even in the midst of the trials and the hurts, the things that we don't understand, we choose to believe in the gracious God who is somehow, even in the midst of whatever this difficulty or hardship or grief is, this God that we worship is with us and will make a way for us. So we face these things with hope, knowing that God loves us, that God has power, and that God has a plan, and that God will help. So we face them with hope and determination and a confidence born of our knowledge that God wants us to have a good life, abundant and eternal. And we face the darkness, we punch as many holes as we can in it, and we move forward in faith even when we can't see all of the plan. We chase the good, we weather the bad, and we find all the joy we can. And we give God thanks and praise for it. I was uh, reading in a book that one of you had loaned to me by Henry Nowen. And he talks about this idea of pushing back the darkness in his book, The Return of the Prodigal. And he writes this. He says... The father of the prodigal son gives himself totally to the joy that his returning son brings him. I have to learn from that. This is Henry speaking. I have to learn from that. I have to learn to steal all the real joy there is to steal and lift it up for others to see. Yes, I know that not everyone has been converted yet, that there is not yet peace everywhere. I know that all pain has not yet been taken away, but still I see people turning and returning home. I hear voices that pray and receive answers. I notice moments of forgiveness and reconciliation, and I witness many signs of hope. I don't have to wait until all is well, but I can celebrate every little hint of the kingdom that is at hand, end of quote. Isn't that great? Just look for the joy and seize that. Everything in our world is not perfect yet. The creation is not fully redeemed. It, us, you, me, we are all works in progress. But God is with us. God is with us. There is so much to celebrate this Easter morning. Jesus has risen and death has lost its sting. And it's also because of Jesus and Easter that we are set free, that we are made pure. We are now called children of God and brothers and sisters in faith. Because of Jesus, everything has changed and we are changed. 
He's punched a hole in the deepest of the darkness, and he calls us to do the same. Keep pushing back the dark. Because of Jesus, the sting of death is gone, and hope is the hero now. And nothing, not even death, can separate us from the love of the risen Christ. Because of Jesus, we are victors. We are overcomers. We are more than conquerors. Guilt is gone. Fear has fled. We are set free, and we are transformed, united in cause, perfected in purpose, givers of good news and grace and mercy. Because of Jesus, we are called children of God and the church on the rock. We are friends of Jesus and brothers and sisters in faith. Heaven is waiting, and we have the assurance for our souls. His sacrifice justifies. His love sanctifies. And the gift of eternal life is free in his name. Because of Jesus, everything has changed. We are changed from the inside out. Where we used to crave the darkness, we now walk in the light. Where we once were dead men and dead women walking, we are now alive in Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, there is peace in our hearts, pardon for our sins, a pouring out to our neighbors in radical generosity, and we keep on pushing back the dark, punching holes in the darkness everywhere we can. Amen? Amen. This is the joy of Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now I'm through. (laughs) All right. Amen. Yeah. All right. Our closing song is a a more contemporary version, but I think it'll be familiar to most of you. It'll be on the screens for you. We don't have um, the music, but it's called In Christ Alone. So I invite you to stand as we sing um, In Christ Alone. Beautiful song. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest storms and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace. When fears are stilled, when striving ceases.
Oh, mercy. Thank you for joining us this Easter Sunday. Um, just remember that you are so loved, you are so worthy, and avail yourselves of the power that Christ has given you to live by, okay? Keep punching holes in the darkness. And uh, kids, uh, the youth minister will meet you at the back door, and you can go get some of those chocolate bunnies Lucas was talking about. <laughs> All right, we got a little Easter egg hunt in the back acres. So adults, you can play too. We have plenty of eggs. Um, go in peace. Let's uh, join together in our benediction. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people because all people are God's people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy Easter.